And sadly, some people in Calaveras County are being told they cannot go back to their homes. Yeah, in Valley Springs, some of the homes have been devastated by the relentless storms. ABC 10's Kurt Rivera takes us inside one home tonight. It's just, it's overwhelming. Ernie Warren is still in shock, seeing firsthand what a creek that rose above its banks did to her Valley Springs home. My six-year-old grandson, he came and he's like, Grandma, your house is broken. You know, but he still doesn't understand. He thinks we can fix it and he can come back and visit. Throughout her house she's owned nine years, floors are covered with mud, furniture and rooms toppled, the garage a jumbled mess, the refrigerator no match for the raging floodwaters. Here in her bathroom, the force of the water here was so strong it actually lifted up the bathtub. So this is the wall and this is the line from the second time that it flooded. Warren's property next to Cosgrove Creek has been flooded four times since New Year's Eve. That tree branch, I don't know where it came from. The floods, obviously. More than 20 homes have been red tagged in the Valley Springs area, meaning uninhabitable until repaired. As we showed you last week, residents say Cosgrove Creek continues to back up, filled with debris and brush. They want it cleaned out and consistently maintained. But if you go up just a little ways this way, it widens so wide that if we cleaned out the debris and maybe dug it out a little bit, this wouldn't have been so devastating. For now, she is staying with relatives and says it may take six to eight months to repair the damage. So this wasn't here uh, when we came out on Sunday. But it will take Sunday. years to heal the emotional scars the floods have left in their wake. Now, Calaveras County officials told us last week the creek is on private property, but they are taking efforts to decrease flood risk, including vegetation removal. Good news tonight for travelers on Highway 99. Part of the highway that was closed due to flooding is now open. All southbound lanes are open and one northbound lane is open between Peltier Road and Turner Road. But the right-hand northbound lane is still closed and there is no estimated time it will reopen. And Monica, this is an improvement considering all the flooding that we are still seeing, but even more improvements weather-wise once we get through tonight. Right, tonight and to early tomorrow morning is going to be the last in the series of these storms that is going to be rippling on through closer perspective. And you'll be able to see that, well, we are going to continue to watch the rain moving in for tonight and snow coming into the Sierra. That will actually be the bigger weather impact that we're dealing with tonight. We've got our weather advisory out until 2 a.m. with mountain impacts, including two to eight inches of snow and difficult travel, a little lower in elevation. We're going to have that winter storm warning in effect until 4 a.m. tomorrow with four to 20 inches of new snow coming into the Sierra. And that's going to pile up on some 10 to 15 feet already this season. As far as our temperatures right now, we're in the 50s for the valley, 30s for this year. It's going to be a cold night for us. Snow levels down to about 2,000 to 3,000 feet. There's that big band of rain coming through at 11 o'clock and that snow hangs on through early tomorrow morning. The valley will be clearing though. Again, those snow lines will be coming down to about 2,000 to 3,000 feet. Very little accumulation at that elevation, but it's going to be some low snow for tonight. For the valley, we've got areas of fog that will linger through much of tomorrow. So a chilly day tomorrow, albeit dry. We'll talk about some frost and fog coming into our forecast, which is going to make for some very cold nights ahead. All right, Monica, thank you.